reminder that if you'd like to be in with a chance to win a blind shell classic mobile phone or a fourth generation Amazon Echo Dot, you can still enter by filling in the survey in our technology newsletter before January 22nd. So that's Friday week. You can still uh, enter before Friday week and the winners will be announced on our show in two weeks time. But back to today's show, what's on uh, what's in store for us today? Well, with all that's happening in the world at the moment, we're more and more reliant on the Internet, aren't we? And it's something that has enabled so many people to either continue to work maybe from home or uh, get to uh, classes for school from home, stay in touch with friends and family over the course of the pandemic. But there's nothing more frustrating than just at the wrong moment your in internet connection lets you down. So is there any solution to that? When you're shopping for an internet provider, is there any one thing you should go for? Or maybe you're in a contract already. Is there anything that you can do to get the most out of the service you already have? Well, Daniel Dunn will be joining us shortly to talk about exactly those uh, issues. A little bit later, we're going to have our Seeing It Your Way piece. And for this week's show, JP has been chatting to Robbie Ford about a, a variety of things, including, as always, how technology has helped him with his vision impairment, but also covering subjects as diverse as stand up comedy. So stay tuned for that a little bit later as well. I'm sure you'll enjoy that one. But first of all, we have something a bit special for our meet the, the team section this week. You might have uh, you might have seen the, the well known show on TV before called the IT crowd. Well, we wanted to bring on one of the stars of the show to talk to us about what life working in IT is all about. But then we thought, actually, why interview someone who was only acting a role when we've got the real thing instead? So that's why this week, instead of Chris O'Dowd or Richard Iowadi, we have the one and only Colin Kenny on the show instead. You're very welcome, Colin. Thanks very much, Jude. Uh, I yeah. hope you enjoyed that introduction. Pretty much, yeah. Most sentences out of my mouth is, have you tried turning it on and off again? And I think <laughs> I think that is the same for anyone who works uh, in IT support, because you'd be surprised the amount of fixes that will do. Yeah, and and don't think that that wasn't going to come into the questions anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a bit, Colin, about where you're based and, and uh, just how long you've been with NCBI. Yeah, I mean, I think probably been here just over 20 years now so it's, it's it's a long time but i'm still lucky enough to sort of really enjoy my job so it doesn't feel like it's been a life sentence or anything and i'm yeah. still looking forward to the next 20 so yeah yeah quite quite happy what i do i mean originally i started uh, a long time ago just to, to cover someone who who had left the organization and it was like a rolling three-month contract for yeah. the course of a year and then that turned into full time and sort of my role has changed over the years. Initially it was just like uh, tech support just for internal staff that's now grown to tech support for internal staff service users. Um, now growing into sort of the purchasing of all assistive technology products, the shipping of it pretty much fingers in every, uh, in a lot of pies in here. So I am kept mm. qu quite busy, but yeah. as I say, uh, I do enjoy it. So what you're saying is that the IT crowd wasn't actually a documentary. It oh, wasn't a real life take on what's happening. If, if, if you'd ever seen my office or when I was out, I wasn't in a basement, I was out in a shed. You, you go, <laughs> yeah, I can see where these guys have got it from. Um, I tend to Did you to consult be, on that by any chance? I think <laughs> someone must have sent in a picture at one stage because we were like, what does an IT office look like? And you have to have half opened PCs, boxes everywhere and probably not really a visible floor. <laughs> but it That's is fair. organized yeah, chaos. I know, I, know, I, I know where everything <laughs> is. It's normally on the floor. <laughs> That's a great answer to that. Do you know yeah. where everything is? I know where everything is. It's on the floor. Yeah, if I can't <laughs> put my hand on it, it wasn't important. <laughs> Brilliant. So tell me something. What was um was this always something that you were you were 
kind of very interested in it anyway. It sounds like obviously you said you still enjoy the job, but is that your background anyway before you joined NCBI? Was it all technology and things? Uh, it was. I mean, I went off to college with the full intention of becoming an accountant. And within the first year of an accountancy course, I realized, no, this is not for me. Then now that's nothing against accountants. It's just during that course, we got a, a sort of a bit more into the technology side of accounts. And I sort of tended up, uh, tended to sort of be helping a lot of the people in that class on their technology issues. And that's when I sort of decided actually it's more, it's more the tech and being able to sort of help people along with that that I wanted to get into. So left college for a while and uh, went back and did a, a PLC course in technology and support. And from there I went on to, I don't know if anyone remembers, it was a computer company called Gateway. Then it was Gateway 2000, but uh, so yeah. spent about a year and a half in there doing tech support for uh, home users. And that was yeah. Yeah, really interesting. I mean, it, it, it's a good foundation for anyone doing technologies to be on the phone to to any client trying to, to fix the problems. But Gateway had this um, brilliant idea of it's almost like a party line where you would stick six home users with the same problem into a chat mm -hmm. with one tech yes. and it would try <laughs> and uh, sort out the problems in a queue. Um, that sounds but, like another potential comedy in the making, surely. Uh, um, horror, <laughs> horror maybe, maybe horror comedy. Yeah, it, it was quite intense. I remember like yeah, the Aztecs, you, you would go on to that sort of call type environment for an hour and you would be given half an hour off to cool down. Man, yeah, 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 I can imagine. And tell me something, do, do you find overall like the, the whole element of trying to support somebody from afar over the phone or over the internet, maybe a, a Teams call or something like that, is how challenging is that? Um, it, it is quite challenging even before the, the likes of a team viewer where we can remote into it. I would say, yeah, it's it's knowing the product well so you can visualize what the, the user is doing and then being able to sort of describe what you want them to do um, with the sort of the introduction of, of remote support with team viewer for us. It, it was really a game changer where we could sort of yeah, just log on to your machine, we'd, we'd, we'd do it for you, but it, it's not really doing it for you. I like to sort of let the users try and do it so they're sort of getting used to it, but I can just, I can see what they're doing. I, I'm not trying to visualize it in my head. I think when at about six, six, seven months of getting that in, I, I almost lost the ability to visualize stuff in my head of what they were doing. Yeah. So I, I still trying to try to force myself to be, up on all the products so I you know what it should look like. Yeah, 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 because that that can be quite a challenge. I suppose there's other barriers if you can't see what's actually happening on the on the screen or on somebody's computer. They, they might be even if even if it's actually the same issue for them in that they can't see what's happening on the screen. They know what they've maybe just done or they might be more familiar with their system, but trying to pick up on that through how somebody describes it over the phone can be maybe a little bit more difficult sometimes. Yeah, I suppose another, um, one of the other roles I was in was like a localization engineer for Microsoft where we were testing uh, Windows 2000 at the time. So that's, that's how long ago that was. But I was the Swedish language lead. I can't speak Swedish. But <laughs> we had to test the, the product in Swedish. So it's sort of <laughs> just, you, you roughly know where the buttons are, you know, you get to you sort of used to it. That sort of helped going forward. I think being able to sort of just go, right, I know what we need to do on how we need to get there. I just mightn't be able to to describe yeah. exactly what's there. Yeah, yeah, man, that, that must have been a, a pretty challenging role to be in. That, that was Is a very good one, I thought, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there anything um is there anything particular you're kind of working on now? Any big projects in sight? Or there might be things, of course, that aren't overly interesting for people to hear about, but anything anything much going on at the moment happening? Oh, there's always stuff happening. Yeah. I teach you, as you know. Um there's there's big projects. I mean we 
tend to sort of a lot of the internal projects for staff um, that sort of in the background tend to be sort of bigger projects that we we work on. So I mean, last year was like a digital transformation rollout, which we timed. I don't know if we knew COVID was coming, but we had shifted a lot of people over to laptops and they were able to work work from home quite easily. Mm -hmm. This year we're, we're looking at, I mean, uh, our whole core system uh, where we record information around service users, we're looking at sort of tagging new stuff onto it, changing the models, just be allowing us to be able to, to sort of record more efficiently what we're doing with service users and also just to, to be able to to reach reach out to them in a, a more timely manner as well. Yeah, brilliant. So there's loads going on behind the scenes. So there's clearly um, plenty that's involved in, in the role that you're in at the moment. But just to finish off on, on this and maybe kind of kind of go a bit full circle here, if there was one piece of tech advice that you were to give to people when they experience a problem, what would it be? Well, we've already said it. <laughs> Come on, like if, if you haven't turned it on and turned it off again, it's normally going to be someone's first question like, yeah. Good stuff.